Hi everyone and welcome to The Crows Show, brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith. Well, it is the last weekend of the home and away season and also our final show for 2017. Yes. Well, fortunately, our AFL team still has some work to do this afternoon against the Eagles and then, of course, during the upcoming final series. Coming up, the medical rooms are usually strictly off limits, but not today. And we catch up with arguably the most popular South Australian sportsman of the 90s. But first, many people are declaring Don Pike the coach of the year, which is not a bad rap for a guy in just his second year in the job. Never one to seek the limelight, his focus right now is on beating his former club West Coast later today. We caught up with Pikey to see if his trip back home to Western Australia takes on extra significance. Clearly as a, as a life member of the, the footy club, you know, I've got a lot of fond memories and friends that are still associated with West Coast, but you know, come Sunday we're, we're over there for one reason and that's four points. It's been a, a positive year to date. We've, we've created ourselves a, a great opportunity um, you know, through some of the, the hard work that our, our players and, and coaches and our, our footy staff have put together. So um, one game to go and then uh, we head into the finals. But uh, it's an exciting time. You know, it always is when you're heading into finals and, and this game becomes important for us to secure that top spot. Um, but after that, uh, uh, we get down to business for, uh, for the finals. perform at a consistently high level. In the last two seasons we made the finals and we won a final and then we got knocked out. You know, that, that similar group has continued this year, learnt some new things and improved in some areas we focused on and you know, we're going to get another opportunity and that's the exciting part of this time of year. We've, we've created that opportunity. That, that opportunity hasn't fallen in our lab. They've worked really hard to create it um, and now as we head into September it becomes how do we best maximise it and that's what we spend our time and energy on now and ultimately that's the beauty of, of high level sport is you want to find out and we're going to we get the opportunity to find out. Pikey has certainly had his share of success in football. Here in SA, we think the Adelaide Oval is the best venue going around, but in the West, they are building their own state-of-the-art stadium. So let's take a look at what it has to offer. When it comes to first impressions, whoa, check that. The new Perth Stadium doesn't disappoint. What do you reckon? Yeah, super impressed, even just standing in front of this screen you get a scope for the size of everything um, you're gonna love playing footy here. From up high on level five down to the newly laid playing surface Nat Five liked what he saw. I bet hit the target then. There it is <laughs> that was the first ball ever kicked on the new stadium. Feel 100%, good? 100% efficiency. Does it get you a bit excited though? Does it get the juices flowing? It does. Um, just to know that we'll get to play here, well I'll get to play here for the next six years at least. World class facility and the engagement that you'll get with the fans given the elevated first row of seating is going to be um, pretty special. With 60,000 extra comfort seats, five levels, two giant high definition screens and more than 1,000 televisions, there's a lot for spectators to get excited about. So imagine what it feels like for the players. You'll lead the boys out here and out onto the ground. Uh, what do you reckon this is going to feel like round one or round two of 2018? Yeah, if it's um, anywhere near capacity crowd, it'll be absolutely heaving. And I'm sure they'll have the pre-game entertainment fired right up as well. So I can't wait. The coach's box can fit 30 people. They even have their own bathroom. And the Eagles and Dockers will have their own dedicated change rooms. How do you sum it up? It's unreal, yeah. I'd encourage everyone to get here and have a look. And when this place is pumping, full of fans, uh, it's going to be the best footy venue in Australia. When Alana returns after the break, we see the best of Brody. Welcome back. Well, it's the room every player wants to steer clear of on match day, or on any day for that matter. Adelaide Oval's medical room can be found deep inside the inner sanctum, and the medical team must be prepared for any type of injury or emergency. Chief Medical Officer Dr Mark Susanna gives this rare insight. Hi, 
right, Mark Susano, club doctor at the Crows. We're two hours before match day. I'm about to take you down to the medical room, which even the broadcasters don't get into on match day. Okay, this is our emergency medical room, uh, by and large, where we bring our injured players. Obviously on match day there could be a whole host of different scenarios of things that could happen, from really severe injuries to more soft tissue, muscular joint injuries. So the most important thing on match day is to have everything set up. As you see, we've got two beds here, which we can treat an urgent player, we can treat a less serious player. If you look over here, we've got some emergency equipment which we might need to use injectable gear, emergency drugs. Over here we've got an ultrasound machine which we may use to look at fractures. So we've got a number of medications that we might use on match day. Some of the more acute interventions for someone who needs a lot of pain relief. We've got urgent pain medications. For us in terms of medical staff we have two doctors on match days. We have a trainer especially assigned to us in the room. We also have two physios. Then quite clearly a player on a match day is trying to avoid this room, but occasionally we have circumstances, unfortunately, where they need to come here. And again, priorities are going to be well looked after, all the equipment's available, all the emergency, non-emergency equipment that a player could ever need to have that injury assessed and managed on match day. Well, fingers crossed the dock isn't too busy for the remainder of the season. Now, Brody Smith has been delivering eye-catching performances in recent weeks and he's been in just as good form, firing questions of all kinds at teammates. Let's look back at the best of Brody's banter in the hot seat. It's all thanks to Revolution Roofing. Fight, I'm ready. Hi. I'm green, mate. Welcome to the Victory Verandas hot seat. I've got 60 seconds to grill my teammates. This week we've got Rory Atkins. Andy Otten. Texan Walker. Mitch McGovern. This week we've got me little mate, Rory Laird. Which player at the club thinks they are the funniest? You. The best thing about me? About you. And if you could be anyone else in the world, who would it be? I wouldn't mind being you. I could still That's be a fair. defender, just not playing anyone. <laughs> Who's actually the funniest? Yep, you're looking at him. Dougie. Oh, he thinks he's pretty funny. What's well, interesting, he said you. <laughs> Where were you born? In a hospital. Where were you born? Uh, in a hospital. Yep, Dougie's already said that. Oh, no point asking this. Do you check your stats after the game? Yes. No, everyone tells me. <laughs> what are you averaging this year? 31.76. <laughs> <laughs> the best nickname at the club? Um, Splat Daddy. Yeah, Splat Daddy's Roy Laird. This is gaming now. <laughs> <laughs> Best nickname of the club. Rat. <laughs> and I've got a pet galah. I don't. <laughs> I bet it just mean you go on a road trip. Uh. <laughs> do you have any pets and do they have Instagram? I don't think he has Instagram. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have Instagram. <laughs> One word to describe yourself. Interesting. <laughs> you go through a lot of loaves of bread, don't you? Yeah, loaves of bread were coming and going like the days of the year. Favourite crouch? Oh, jeez. Heads or tails? Matt. <laughs> <laughs> if you could be anyone else in the world, who would it be and why? Hugh Hefner. Why? I don't, I don't have to answer that, do I? I can only ask why. <laughs> Floyd Mayweather. I would like to be Julio Jones. Myself. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Jay. <laughs> A few likeable crows in amongst that bunch, but you would be hard pressed to find a more popular player than Tony Modra in his prime. Known for his high flying marks, Modra was a sporting sensation in the club's early days. He played 165 games and kicked 588 goals and spent the final days of his career at Fremantle. In this segment, Flying the Nest, brought to you by Flight Centre, we catch up with Mods, who is still involved with the club. He's the lad from Loxton that could excite crowds like few others. Mantra! Oh, that is the mark of the year. I will say now, no one will beat that. High flying grabs like that one, and for that matter, an AFL career nearly didn't eventuate. So I've been down and played a couple of games with the Westies before, under 19s, didn't quite like the city life, went back home, but then finally decided to give it another go. In the space of just 18 months, Tony Modra went from country footballer to national headlines and some of the game's biggest accolades. Kicked 100 goals and um, but stood him in the Coleman medal. Gary Ablett won it that year, which which is good to um, lose those sort of things to a player like that, I guess. Um, I guess 
when people say, were you upset about it? I said, not really. I was probably more upset about losing Mark of the Year to him next year. For all the individual glory, a knee injury robbed him of the chance to play in Adelaide's first premiership in 1997. It was just one of those things. I mean, did everything right leading up to it. And unfortunately, the knee didn't hold off for that one extra game. So, but went, the experience was fantastic. I'd never take that back because just knowing that you were there for the whole time of that year and winning the grand final and everything else was just, unfortunately, he couldn't contribute on the day. After finishing his career at Fremantle, Modra returned to Adelaide and has recently rekindled his involvement with the Crows. The Bunker Room, I host every home game, holds about 150 guests for our package they do there. A lot of people enjoy coming down for that and also I do a few Crows Jets away to Melbourne and different places so I'm pretty sure we'll be taking a few Crows Jets to Melbourne hopefully this year for the grand final. As well as being involved in the club, Modra and his wife Erica now run a retail outlet at Glenelg. What started out as a surf store has been relaunched and now offers a unique family friendly beach experience. Boards on the pier is a unique South Australian experience where you can come down not only just um, you know, take sups out in the water for a paddle, you can also have something to eat, have a coffee and just relax. Coming up after the break, can a crow claim the Brownlow? We ask the fans. And this ain't no Sunday drive. We crown the winner of the Toyota Hilux Off-Road Driving Challenge. As we saw earlier in the show and throughout the season, Brody Smith, he loves a laugh, but behind the jokes and one-liners is a young man desperate for success and willing to do the work. Beautiful ball, Smith just waltzes in and the Crows get one back, two goals to Brody Smith. Brody Smith knew that his early season form had been patchy. His teammates also offered some timely advice. But halfway through the year after the Hawthorne game, I um, had some strong feedback from um, Podsy, Pikey uh, and the leaders as well that, you know, something had to change. Brody has developed a harder edge and now picks the right moments to be light-hearted. I do like to muck around and have a good time and I guess the, the perception was just that that's all I like to do and I've tried to put the humour aside a little bit and really show that, that driven side of myself and, and I want to play team footy and, and be part of a su successful team. Focusing on the defensive side of his game has also helped his development. That mental shift of actually really focusing on it and valuing um, defence. Um, obviously I like to attack, that's the way I play, but playing in the back line, obviously you've got to defend first. Successful teams are always defensively strong, but the maturity of the current Crows crop could be telling come September. The most exciting thing is how far these groups come and we know that you know when we play our best it's it's the best in the competition so we'll take that confidence in the finals. From outside 50 struck it well can he ever launch it wouldn't surprise if Brody claims another all Australian selection when the team is finalised in the coming days. Time to head into the Crows kitchen thanks to Thomas Farms and find out whether David McKay or Troy Menzel can dish up a delicacy that's in part two of their cook-off. I've got my mates in Men's and DMAC, and we're going to have a cook-off between them. All right, let's get started. I'm doing my favourite thing, which is peeling some garlic. <laughs> I'm not going to take sides here, DMAC. I feel like the way he's chopping no, That's all right, I'll do the other dog. Give it a little taste. Oh. That's, that's spot on. All right, pass is done, time to drain that. I turn my thinking on to make sure it's aligned with yours. I'm obviously doubtful, how could anyone? All right, boys, moment of truth here. I'm here to judge it. They both look amazing. I'm going to judge it, as I said before, on taste, on presentation, and on if I like you or not, <laughs> if you're a good bloke. <laughs> All right, we'll go to presentation. I'm going to give Troy's a nine. I'm going to give you yours an eight because just because you got a bit too much green showing at the top, and he's he's covered his, which I liked as a child. A lot of cheese in there. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, it's really, do Matt. You, you've cooked it really well. I'm going to give it a nine out of ten. It was Ooh. it was very good. Again, very good. D-Max had a bit more flavour than yours. Ooh. I think he, I think he might have the other. His pasta tasted a bit better as well, so 
I'm going to give you a 7 out of 10. D-Max up 17 to 16. Now, what's going to be the decider is how good of a bloke they are. <laughs> D-Max, I'm going to give you an 8 out of 10. <laughs> And Mans, I'm going to give you out of 10 out of 10. So, Come Mans, on. Mans is going to be the winner. 27 to 26. Sorry, oh, mate. Stiff, mate. But, uh... While the Premiership race has quite rightly attracted all the attention, there has been another intense battle going on. Players, past and present, have been jumping behind the wheel of a Toyota Hilux and tackling a special off-road course at Saunders Gorge near Adelaide. We can confirm David McKay, James Podziadley and Riley Knight were the fastest three. So let's count down to the winner, starting in third place. <laughs> yes! So DMAC took third, now in second spot was a player turned coach. Trust the car, trust the car here mate. That leaves Riley Knight as our four-wheel driving champion, and Alana caught up with him. Riley Knight, congratulations. How does it feel to be the inaugural Toyota four-wheel drive champion? Oh, it's a huge honour. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's very unexpected and um, just uh, very happy to be able to take this baby home. Do you think that being a, a Claire boy, you had an advantage over some of the other boys in the group? Uh, I'd like to say so, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. You were with some of the elder statesmen of the group, uh, Nathan Van Burlow, James Podsiadley, and they weren't too afraid to let you know what they thought on the track? No, I think they were trying to do everything they could to uh, slow me down a little bit, but um, yeah. Cheers, boys. <laughs> Now you were the last one to run the course, did that contribute to your success? I was, yeah, I was the last one to go actually, so I got a nice view of the course before I, before I went round and um, yeah, saw all the little shortcuts and where I could make up some time and um, yeah, got through. Well Riley, congratulations, the title is yours, well done. Thanks, I appreciate it. So now it's official, Riley is both fast on and off the field. Here's the final leaderboard. It was tight in the top 10 with Douglas, Jacobs and Van Burlow showing that experience counts. For what it's worth, Matty Robran came in last. Still ahead on the Crow Show, we check out what was good in the world of social media. back. Well, it's now time to check out social media and the club's Facebook, Instagram and Twitter feeds. Always have the latest news, images and updates covering all areas of the club. First up, how great was it to see 22 Crows members get presented with match-worn jumpers after the Round 22 game against Sydney? And a picture of concentration. Pikey gives his final orders just before the opening bounce. Well, the award season is fast approaching and there is no bigger night on the football calendar than the Brownlow medal. Adelaide has only had the one winner and that was Mark Rusciuto way back in 2003. Will it be another crow this year? We asked the fans for their thoughts. Well, it has to be dusty now, doesn't it? Yeah. But I'll be surprised if someone else wins it, but you never know. Clearly Dusty's a runaway, but uh, hopefully Matt Crouch sneaks a few votes in there as well and uh, gives him a bit of a shake. Rory Sloan. Uh, probably Dusty, Dusty, unfortunately, yes. Do you reckon, I reckon Sloan should get that. Yeah. Oh, I reckon Dusty. <laughs> probably have to say Dusty's a certain yeah, thing. I would have said Dusty. Yeah. yeah. Matt, maybe. Matt Crouch, Crouch. is smoky yeah. for uh, the Crows. Third or fourth, maybe. Staying with the fans, let's find our crow in the crowd. Why don't we stop on you? If you recognise yourself, make sure you contact the club before 5pm next Wednesday, be ready with some photo ID and you'll win a merchandise pack. That just about wraps up today's show brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. Yes, and it's also our final show for the year. So thanks to all of you who have tuned in each week. We've loved every minute of showing you what goes on behind the scenes. Now, of course, there is still plenty to look forward to with the team heading into September and guaranteed of two home finals. And who knows, 
Maybe a trip to the MCG could be on the cards. We'll keep our fingers crossed. We sure will. Now, don't forget the best place to catch all of your finals news and insights is the website, afc.com.au. There's always exclusive and innovative content to be found. At the weekend, the club delivered the AFL's first live stream of virtual reality video. You could see straight into the change rooms as the players prepared for the match just moments before the opening bounce. And there's more exciting initiatives to look forward to as well. Thanks for your company today and throughout the season. Until next time, it's goodbye from us. Bye for now.